Fala, Nick Fens! Beleza? Sou Victor Hatba do canal Nick Fans Brasil, galera. Hoje, today, eu vou ter a honra. It's a great honor, né? Em receber aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil a Zac Brasileira, né? From New York Post, né? Nós vamos conversar aqui, pessoal, sobre é, quem é Zac Brasileira, rumores do draft e rumores em geral do New York Knicks, né? Enfim, welcome, welcome to the Nick Fans Brasil channel, Zac Brasileira from New York Post. Hey man, I uh, really appreciate you having me on. Thanks, thanks a lot. Ah, oh, a great, great honor, né? Bring to bring you in our channel, man. Uh, oh, the questions uh, I make first in Portuguese for you and later in English, uh, and you answer for us, ok? Yep. Então vamos lá. Primeira pergunta, first question. Zach, uh, gostaria que você, né? Aliás, primeira pergunta, não, né? Not, not question, né? <laughs> introduce, né? Faça uma introdução. Introduce yourself, Zach, para nós, Brasi for Brazilians. <laughs> All right. My, uh, well, my name is Zachary Brazil. I'm, I'm a sports reporter for the New York Post. I'm, I'm covering the Knicks right now while uh, Mark Berman is away. My, uh, I do a lot of college basketball, so I, I know a lot of these players very, very well. Um, cover St. John's and cover, you know, all the local teams and do some national stuff too. And, and I'm basically covering the Knicks now for the next month while Mark is away attending to some personal matters. So, uh, you know, I've been at the Post for about eight years and been, you know, one of our college, I've been our college reporter for a long time. So I'm very familiar with a lot of these players and uh, <clears throat> obviously the draft is Thursday and I know everyone's interested to see what the Knicks will do. Uh, yeah, the draft, all draft, all draft for the New York Knicks. <laughs> in soon, in soon, coming soon this draft. Uh, inicialmente, né, nessa entrevista, o Zach Brasileiro, né, comenta, né, que ele é um colunista, né, do New York Post, que no momento, né, ele está, é, enquanto Mark Berman está ausente, ele está é, fazendo é, colunas, né, posts sobre o New York Knicks, né, e, e que ele já trabalha, né, com essa questão também sobre college, é, esportes assim do gênero, e que ele, por estar direto trabalhando, ele sabe muito bem dessa área aqui. E como eu já disse, faz mais ou menos mais de oito anos, né? Que ele já trabalha com essa parte de esportes, colegiais e também uh, uh, esportes sobre o país todo, né? E que enquanto o, o Mark Berman está fora, né? Por, por problemas pessoais, aí ele está é, podendo falar sobre draft com, no jornal e também com o pessoal que tem chamado ele, né? E que é bem bacana porque ele, ele praticamente no dia a dia dele está acostumado a ver sobre isso. E aí também já comentando sobre o que, que a gente já pode esperar no draft de quinta-feira, dia 23 de junho, né? É, Zach, first in português. Uh, gostaria de te perguntar né, uh, sobre o draft né, uh, NBA 2022. Quais, quais são as suas opiniões né, sobre os jogadores né, neste draft? Quais você acha que sejam os jogadores mais realistas? Né, e, 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 de repente, movimentos que o Knicks pode fazer neste draft? In English for you, Zach. Uh, what's your opinion about uh, this draft né, from the Knicks? Uh, favorite players, né, realistic players from the Knicks, and the movement uh, the Knicks can be uh, a trade in a pick four, pick seven, or another rumors né, in this draft? Yeah, the, or, or... The, the big question um, for the Knicks here in the draft is, you know, can they trade up? The Knicks clearly need a point guard. They need a playmaking yes. guard to play next to RJ Barrett. Now, <clears throat> the guy that I think everyone would love to see them get would be Jaden Ivey of Purdue. You know, he's a great athlete. He's super fast. He's probably the best guard in the draft. Now, he's probably going to go with the fourth or the fifth pick. The Knicks have the 11th pick. There's been talk that the Knicks are trying to trade up to draft him. 
Now, we don't know if that's actually going to happen. We don't know if they have what, you know, the Kings are the team at number four that a lot of people think might might trade their pick and might trade down. I know the, the Knicks have talked with them about possibly doing that. Now, we'll see if that happens. Now, there's also been talk of the Knicks maybe even trading up to seven or eight to get Dyson Daniels, who is a player who went straight to the G League Ignite team. And, you know, he's a great defender. He's super long and athletic. And he'll probably go somewhere between six and eight. So the Knicks would have to trade up for him as well. I haven't heard quite as much talk about him, about them trading up for him as Ivy. Now, if they stay at 11, I think there's a lot of possibilities. I don't think you're looking at a point guard. I I just don't see a player in that in that range that makes sense at 11. Now, I think there's a good chance if the Knicks are where they are, they could take A.J. Griffin of Duke, who's a – really good three-point shooter. He's actually from the New York area. He's from Westchester. Um, there's possible of him. There's possible a few other guys, Johnny Davis uh, of Wisconsin, who's, you know, another kind of a wing, a 2-3. Oche Agbaji of Kansas is another guy they worked out with for. Um, but to me, the move the Knicks have to make, and they have to move up. The Knicks need a difference maker at the guard position. They don't have next to Barrett. They need another really, yes. really good guard. And to me, if they stay at 11, that player probably isn't there. They need to find a way to move up and get a difference maker. Uh, what's your opinion, for example, about uh, Malachi Braham? No, he's definitely a guy, if they stick at 11, that they could get. You know, he, he had a great year at Ohio State. He's a really good shooter. He's athletic. You know, people didn't really think he would be one and done in college. And... He had a ter terrific year. I know the Knicks, the Knicks worked him out, at, and they're pretty high on him. He's another guy. If they stay at 11, they could get. But I just, I don't see, I, I don't see any of these guys who they would take at 11 as being guys who are like going to change the team. They need someone who could really kind of change the team. And to me, Ivy is that guy. You know, they they haven't had a point guard in forever. You know that. I mean, they've needed a point guard for so long. And to me, Ivy is long, that guy. Long. Long, long time ago. <risos> You're right. Uh, Já começa comentando, né, que para esse draft, um dos, uma das grandes questões para o Knicks é realmente tentar fazer um grande movimento, né, para pegar uma pique ainda mais alta, né, já que o Knicks tem essa grande necessidade de um, de um armador de elite para o time, né. E já começa, lógico, falando sobre é, Jaden Ivey, né, que poderia ser uma super ajuda... Uh, junto com o RJ Barrett. Aí ele comenta em seguida, né, que como todos nós sabemos, o, o, o Jaden Ivey tem uma grande probabilidade de ser a pick 4, a pick 4 que pertence ao Sacramento Kings, que a gente não sabe, né, se realmente vai acontecer essa, essa troca, se o Knicks vai conseguir fazer uma proposta e o Kings aceitar essa troca, mas que com certeza o Jaden Ivey tem características e habilidades que poderiam ser muito interessantes para o Knicks, né. E se qualquer coisa não conseguir negociar a 4 e de repente tentar negociar a 7, ele acredita, na opinião dele, que na posição 7, nesse draft, pode ser que esteja o Dyson Daniels, que é um jogador que ele gosta bastante, que ele uh, chega a elogiar questões de algumas habilidades é, que o jogador possui, né? Boa defesa... É um jogador rápido, enfim, ele enalteceu qualidade sobre Dyson Daniels, que aí se o Knicks conseguir poderia também ser um jogador que cresceu muito né, nessa época do NBA é, Combine e etc, e que poderia ser um jogador interessante para os Knicks também, de repente tentando, se não conseguir negociar a pick 4, de repente negociar a pick 7. Caso o Knicks não consiga uh, negociar e, e, e permanecer com a PIC-11, ele acredita que um dos prováveis, um dos mais prováveis que possam ter chance de ser a PIC-11 nesse draft é AJ Griffin, né? uh, de, de Duck, que é um jogador de Duck que é um ótimo chutador de três pontos, até como já foi citado no canal Knicks Fans Brasil e está na playlist né, do Draft NBA 2022 que pode ser um alvo para os Knicks aí, que pode ter grande possibilidade. Ele comenta também que uma grande possibilidade que pode ter chances de acontecer é Johnny Davis, né, do Scansen. E fora ele também, uh, o Shai Agbaj, que inclusive no New York Post ele fez altos elogios sobre esse jogador, né. 
mas que na opinião dele, independente de qualquer coisa desses jogadores que ele citou, ele acha muito impor importante que o Nick possa tentar e de repente conseguir uma pique mais alta para conseguir realmente um playmaker, um jogador que possa é, ser um diferencial na armação do New York Knicks, né? Aí em seguida até perguntei e falamos sobre Malakai Brahman. Ele comentou, né, que Malakai teve um ano muito bom no college, que se destacou bastante, que tem, que é um jogador que pode ter uma possibilidade também, né, de de repente no draft poder aparecer na pick 11, né? Mas independente disso, ele não acredita que nenhum desses nomes são capazes de ser um diferencial para fazer uma grande mudança na, na franquia. E ressaltando, inclusive, que a que Ivey tem a possibilidade de ser esse cara. Uh, 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 Jaden Ivey uh, can be a... Uh, como é... Como é uh, will be a great movement uh, if the Knicks uh, trade this pick four, in your opinion. Uh, Jaden Ivey uh, can change uh, the nível uh, from the Knicks and the next season. Uh, or, in your opinion, uh, Jaden Ivey, uh, not, uh, it's a super star. Uh, uh, I, I hear people uh, talk so much about uh, Jaden Ivey. I, I saw highlights, I saw informations about this guy. I like it. Uh, but in your opinion, Jaden Ivey, uh, It's all that uh, about this guy, uh, in your opinion. Jaden Jaden Ivey can can be changed. A Knicks uh, uh, playing with R.J. Barrett, um, Obi Toppin, uh, Emmanuel Kikley, in your opinion, or not? I don't know if, if Ivey like makes the Knicks, you know, a very good team overnight. But I think you have there's just such a need for a point guard and for a lead guard on this team. You have Barrett, who to me is starting to take steps to become one of the better players in the league. And you need a guard next to him to kind of lighten the load, to run the team. And to me, Ivy is that guy. I'm not saying he's going to be a superstar. I know people have come, kind of compare him a little bit to Russell Westbrook just in terms of his athleticism and how quickly he kind of gets by guys. Uh -huh. I just think, um, I just think he he was he's just the kind of he's the fit they need. They they need that point guard. They've been waiting so long, and I, you know, I know there's talk of maybe Jalen Brunson and, and Malcolm Brogdon are possibilities. I just I don't know if those things can happen. Especially, it doesn't sound like Brunson doesn't sound like it's that good of a chance to happen. I just think they need, the Knicks need to go out there and get themselves a big uh, a lead guard, a star guard. And look, we never know what these guys are going to become when they get to the NBA, but I, but I just think Ivy's athleticism and motor is something that could just, that would just be perfect for the Knicks next to Barrett. Yeah, I, I heard uh, comparations. Uh, Jaden Ivy with uh, comparisons with, uh, uh, for example, Jamoran. Uh, do you agree this comparison or not? Yeah, I've I've heard that. Um, you know, I, I've I've heard Russell Westbrook as well. I mean, look, he's he does things. You know, just his ability to get into the lane and get by guys is is something that you know teams love. You know, they, they love guys who can get into the lane and can get to the paint. And his first step is just is electric. He just goes right past guys. And he's just so quick. And I actually think, you know, in college, where a lot of teams kind of play off and play zone, you know, there isn't as much spacing. In the NBA, that extra spacing, I think you would see Ivy be even better because it's just so hard to stay with him and he'd have more room to operate. You know, I, I think Ivy would be a no-brainer um, for the Knicks. Próxima pergunta, né? Até, faço, até ressalto o que ele tinha falado no final da outra, da outra pergunta ali que é sobre a questão do Jaden Ivey ser um jogador que poderia mudar o Knicks, né? Digamos assim, é, jogando junto com o RJ Barrett, entre outros jogadores. Ele já começa dizendo, não é que ele acha que seja né, uma mudança da noite para o dia, tendo o Ivey e fazendo o Knicks ser um, um excelente time, digamos assim. Uh, mas que com certeza, pelo que eu entendi, ele contribuiria bastante, né? Uh, ele não está querendo que vai dizer que na opinião dele vai ser um super all-star, né? 
até como muitos até compararam algum, algumas questões do Ivey, é, em alguns aspectos, deixando claro, por exemplo, com o Russell Westbrook, né? E que, de qualquer maneira, a, o Knicks há muito tempo precisa né, de um point guard de qualidade, um jogador de uma armação que seja é, diferente, e que esse jogador pode ser o Ivey, né? E a parte ressaltando da comparação né, com o Russell Westbrook é na questão do atleticismo, né? Que ele cita no vídeo e tal. E que, na opinião dele, Jaden Ivey pode funcionar uh, muito bem nos Knicks, né? Que é um dos jogadores que mais podem... É, digamos assim, encaixar perfeitamente, né? traduzindo de uma outra forma, no New York Knicks. E em seguida até pergunto para ele, né, no, do Jaden Avey, a comparação né, que eu já cheguei a escutar, é sobre ja Jamoran, por exemplo. E ele acaba citando, né, que chegou a ouvir também falar sobre isso, né, além da, da comparação com o Russell Westbrook, e que uma das questões né que é um jogador muito elétrico né ele ele é aquilo que já foi até falado em outros vídeos né que ele tem uma explosão e etc muito impressionante uh, I hear in Brazil né uh, with uh, another guys um, uh, rumors rumors do you know rumors in this draft about sure. this pick for about this pick for and about this pick seven. Uh, I heard, for example, the Knicks offer it uh, to a Portland, uh, a trade, uh, um, Burks, Noel, and pick for pick seven. Uh, exist uh, uh, a rumor about, uh, a real rumor about the, this, this offer about right. the Knicks with a Portland or the pick four is exist or not no there it, there's no doubt that you know it, it is true the knicks are trying to move up but i i don't i don't think nerlens noel is enough to and your pick is enough to move up to seven i think the knicks are gonna have to trade one of their young players whether it's obi topin whether it's quickly might have to trade another future pick as well especially if they want to get up to four um and i think they have to do it you know i uh -huh. it, to me it If it means trading Obi Topin, you do it. If you, I'm talking about getting up to four, not seven, four. You know, uh -huh. um, I think that's something they need, really, really, really need to consider. You know, to me, like, you know, what they have now to me isn't good enough. They need more. They need a difference-making player. And I don't, I don't think they have that besides R R J Barrett. I think R J Barrett obviously is is that player, but they need more of those guys and. You know, and I think Ivy would be one of them. And, you know, uh, it's hard when trading up in the draft. You know, teams always want a ton of ton of assets, and I'm sure they're going to want a lot of future picks from the Knicks, and I'm sure the Knicks don't want to trade Obi to Obi. But to me, as long as Julius Randle's on the team, I think Obi's ceiling is going to be kind of limited just because his role isn't going to be big enough because of, you know, obviously Julius. There. So, I mean, I if I'm the Knicks, I wouldn't let Obi Tobin stand in my way of getting to the fourth pick. A pergunta seguinte, né, emendando, é, eu peguei e fiz, né, uh, sobre rumores que eu cheguei a ouvir aqui no Brasil, né, que chegaram até mim, é, que o Knicks poderia estar já fazendo ofertas pelas picks, né, como por exemplo com o Portland Trail Blazers, que é a pick 7, pick 7, é, oferecendo Burks, Noel e a pick 11 para obter a pick 7, né, por exemplo. E também querendo saber sobre a pick 4, né? Uma das questões que ele já comentou aqui, por exemplo, oferecer Noel, Burks, por exemplo, não seria ofertas suficientes na opinião dele. E provavelmente os times iam querer jovens talentos do Knicks, como por exemplo, o Bitolpin, é, Emmanuel Kikley, por exemplo. Agora, que se for para envolver o Bitolpin, então seja a pick 7, que daí seja na, na, numa oferta na pick 4, daí, né? E ele acredita que por mais que os times queiram envolver, por exemplo, o RJ Barrett nessas, nessas negociações, ele não acredita que o Knicks vai querer fazer isso, porque o time está querendo montar um time em cima, né, de RJ Barrett. Uh, I saw your post about Oshai Agbaje, né, from Kansas. I like so much uh, this player. I like so much Oshai. Uh, do, do, you, uh, do you believe Oshai Agbaje... Uh, Together, uh, RJ Barrett uh, 
it's a, a good for for the, uh, it's good for the, from the Knicks a Shai Agbaje together RJ Barrett in the same team. Yeah, I think it would work. You know, Ochai is a great, is a terrific shooter. He shot over 40% uh, for three-point last year for Kansas. He's a good defender. He can play multiple, you know, positions on the wing. Yeah, I think it would work. Now, I don't think his ceiling maybe is as high as some other guys, but he's, no, he's older. He's 22 years old. And yes. a lot of times teams kind of shy away from these uh, older players, but he's a guy that's really improved every year in college. And look, the Knicks are a team that could use more shooting. He's a guy that really can shoot. He's got good size as a guard. And no, if they stay at 11, I don't think he would be a bad pick. No, not at all. I mean, I, I think there's also something to be said for a guy who's won at the highest level. You know, he helped Kansas win the national championship. That's to me, is, is important to bring in guys who are winners and are used to winning. Because obviously we know the Knicks haven't won a lot. <laughs> you know, so I think the more guys they have that win, em seguida, né, a gente deu continuidade, eu falando sobre a Shai Agbaj, e ele comentando né, que a Shai Agbaj é, pode ser muito interessante, sim, jogando ao lado de RJ Barrett, que ele ressaltou algumas qualidades, como, por exemplo, é, o Shai Agbaj, ele tem um bom, é, uma boa porcentagem de arremessos, tem uma boa, ele é um bom defensor, ele defende bem, e até ele ressalta né, que o, que o Oshai ajudou o Kansas a ganhar um campeonato. Uh, por mais que ele já tenha 22 anos, né, que ele seja um pouco mais velho que a maioria dos outros jogadores no draft, uh, pode ser um jogador que pode ajudar, porque, como eu já falei, ele é um bom chutador. Né, então pode ser interessante para o Knicks. E até ele comenta, né, brincando, que seria interessante chamar o... Tem um jogador como o Aguibaj, porque ele já conhece o que é ser vencedor. Porque o Knicks já faz há alguns anos que não sabe que é isso, né, digamos assim. Então, tem esse espírito vencedor, né, por já ter vencido o campeonato por Kansas. I like so much, Isaac, uh, Benedict Maturin, but Benedict Maturin, I believe, uh, pick seven, pick eight, pick eight, né, or pick night. Uh, it's another Canada player, né, uh, I like so much Benedict Maturin. Benedict Maturin, in the Knicks, uh, Will be a great player in the Knicks, or, or, or do you do you do you not our opinion about this? Oh, no, I, I, I like him ben, a lot. Ben I think he's really good. I, you know, um, I just think I he's another guy to me. If the Knicks want him, they have to move up. I think he's going to be gone, yes, by probably somewhere between five and seven. Um, five. I, Yeah, I, yeah. I, I love probably maybe maybe five's a little high, but I mean I wouldn't be surprised. I he's uh -huh. a he's a big he's a big wing. He really shoots. He's a terrific defender. I mean, yes, there's a lot there's It's, a lot to like. Like mean, Barrett together would be uh, would be a fascinating tandem. I think they'd be terrific together. Uh, aí começamos a falar em seguida, né, sobre Benedict Maturin que ele até ressalta, né, que é um jogador assim que também, se o Knicks quiser, vai ter que se movimentar no draft para conseguir, né? Porque na opinião dele, ele pode chegar é, até pick 5, na opinião dele. Por mais que até eu tenha ficado surpreso, né, comentando em seguida, né? Porque querendo ou não, a maioria eu vi entre 7 a 9. Ele disse que ele, e para ele ele não ficaria surpreso se acontecesse no dia do draft Maturin estar tá em quinto, né? É um jogador que que contribui bastante em quadra, né? Que tem explosão, que tem é um bom trabalho de quadra, se destaca em quadra, né? E Maturin, né? Canadense também, assim como o Barrett, jogando juntos, uh, seria muito interessante de ver eles jogando né, no mesmo time, né? Uh, I like so much Dyson Daniels, né? But, but Dyson Daniels, hi, in this draft, man. Uh, I, I saw uh, Dyson Daniels uh, between uh, pick, pick, 12, te, pick 10 and pick um, 14, né? Dyson Daniels, now it's high in this draft, man. Uh, I hear uh, Dyson Daniels uh, so great in NBA combined. Uh, that's correct uh, for from Dyson Daniels high in the in this in this draft. Yeah, he's um he's a guy that's really that's really risen up draft boards. That teams teams really really like him. You know, just he's got you know his, his jump shot still needs some work, but he's so long, he's so athletic, 
He's a real he's a real hard worker. I know I talked to someone at the G League who, who just raved about him. You know, teams are teams are very, very, very high on him. You know, he's you know, probably him and McDern are probably kind of in the same boat, you know, right around six to eight. Um and you know, and I think that's gonna be tough. Obviously, then you know there are a lot of these guys the Knicks like and would love to draft, but they're gonna have to move up to get there. Do you do you agree a uh, comparison with uh, Josh Gidden uh, between uh, Jack uh, Dyson Daniels and Josh Gidden? Do you agree this comparison? Yeah, I see some similarities. You know, I mean, obviously we won't really know for sure until you know until he gets until he gets there and he get, he gets into the league. But yeah, I, I think there are definitely similarities when you're talking about long athletic point guards who you know. Who maybe aren't shoot first guys, but they can really defend and they can do so many things. Yeah, I, I could definitely see that. Em seguida, até falamos, inclusive, né, sobre essa subida, né, do Dyson Daniel, né, no, nas, entre, os, entre os picks mais altos do draft, né, que ele era cotado com picks acima de 10 para cima e que agora ele está cotado entre os 10 maiores. E até pergunto para ele se, se ele concorda né, com algumas comparações que fizeram do Dyson Daniels, né, por exemplo, com o Josh Gidden. E ele comenta que, que sim, que ele, que ele enxerga que essas comparações em alguns, algumas, alguns quesitos fazem sentido. Sim. Zach, uh, Zach, sorry. <laughs> uh, do you know about uh, Mitchell Robinson? I don't know the future about this guy. Uh, in this draft, uh, I, I see uh, a good centers. Uh, for example, uh, Mark Williams from Duke, uh, Jalen Duran uh, uh, from Memphis Tigers. Uh, if the Knicks get it, a center, do you uh, believe it's a good for this team or not? Because I don't know the future, uh, Mitchell Robinson. Yeah, look, it's it's a it's a very valid question. I, I I don't either. Look, as well as good as there are certain things Mitchell Robinson does when you look at his his dunks and his defense. He's a guy. He's he's always hurt. You know, he he really yes. hasn't improved much in terms of an offensive player. And the Knicks might not really want to pay him. And right now, he's going to be a free agent, and they're going to have to make a decision if they're going to pay him or not. And look, you mentioned there are two, these are two very good players in the draft. You know, Durin yes. is he's very good. Williams is very good. These are both guys that kind of have this, have a similar profile to Robinson in terms of they're not really shooters, but they can defend and they're, you know, they can guard a lot of different players. And, You know they're athletic, so yeah. I mean, I think if the Knicks are 11 and maybe there there isn't that guy they really want, maybe they do go that route and they and they let then they let Mitchell Robinson walk. It's look, it's it's a very tough decision. It, <laughs> it's it, very hard. It's a very hard decision because Robinson is a good player and he does certain things very well, but he hasn't progressed like they like like they've wanted, and he is always injuries are a big issue with him. He gets hurt a ton. And so are they they might be hesitant here to give him big money um because of those things and the fact that you have these two centers in the draft that maybe one maybe they can take. Até em seguida, né, eu levanto a questão com com o Zac é, sobre <risos> se o Knicks, né, uh, no draft acaba é, de repente pegando o pivô, como por exemplo, é, Mark Williams de Duke, né, ou né, do Memphis Tigers, que são, na minha opinião, bons pivôs, que eu falei para ele, e perguntei, né, se a que a gente não sabe o futuro de Mitchell Robinson, né? Aí, quando eu perguntei sobre isso, ele falou, realmente, nem eu é, sei sobre isso ainda, realmente é um mistério saber o que, que vai acontecer, porque agora uh, o Knicks vai ter que pagar mais, se caso quiser ficar com o Mitchell Robinson, a gente não sabe o que, que vai acontecer. É um jogador que se machuca bastante, né? que, pode, que ajuda muitas vezes na defesa, mas no ataque não é tão eficiente. Né? Mas que agora vai ter que tomar uma decisão. Mas que na opinião dele, se pegar um pivô nesse draft, pode ser interessante porque esses dois jogadores são jogadores que, que podem agregar, que são jogadores muito bons. Né? Mas que isso é uma, <risos> que é uma decisão difícil. 
que é uma decisão difícil, né? E eu acredito que ele fala isso porque, realmente, né? Porque o Knicks precisa de um, de um armador, né? Não de um pivô diretamente, né? Sac, uh, we are talking about centers. I like so much talk with you about this phenomenal uh, in internet, the great Philippine, <laughs> the new Karim Abdul-Java from the Philippines. We are talking about, uh, I like talk with you about Kai Soto. Uh, uh, what's your opinion né, about this phenomenal in internet? Né? Kai Soto, in, the, in this channel, man, Rain Philippines comments about this guy. The country loves, really loves né, uh, Kai Soto. What's your opinion about Kai Soto? You know, he's... He's a bit raw. I know he's he's seven two. Obviously, he played in the NBA, you know, down in, in Australia. And you know, I know he did work out for the Knicks. He's worked out for the Kings. He's worked out for the Hawks. I think he's probably you know uh, a guy that's going to go in the in the second round here. Um, so you know, he's probably gonna, he's probably going to have to put in some time in the G League and and and, and you know and do some kind of things there. But no, look, he's. He's big and athletic, and teams clearly like him. They brought him in for workouts, and you know we'll see what happens for him on draft night here. Ah, yeah, I, I ask it to you because my man, uh, I scared it. People love this man. <laughs> really, really, really loves Kai Soto in Philippines. Now nah? can be a uh, the first nah? Philippine uh, a play, uh, player in the NBA. The, the this country. It's a, make, a, make a campaign for this guy in the NBA. <laughs> hey, look, when you're when you're as big and long and as athletic and you're seven two, you got a shot. You know, he yes, he, he's probably going to get drafted uh, in the second round, and and from there, oh. you know, he's he's going to have to prove or out, right? Or out, or out in, in well, this draft. What'd you say? Uh, Knicks, uh, uh, for example, Knicks uh, can be uh, get it, uh, Kai Soto out the draft. Yeah, they not. could get it in the they have, they have a second round pick, 42nd overall. So, you know, there's a chance that maybe they use that on, you know, I don't think it's too far fetched to say maybe they use it on him. I mean, yeah, they the Knicks have two picks, they have 11 and 42. A pergunta seguinte, né, eu faço sobre o fenômeno Kai Soto, né, na internet, que os, uh, os filipinos, assim, demonstram seu amor por Kai Soto de uma forma muito grande, né, e queria a opinião do, do Zaki sobre Kai Soto, e aí ele já começa comentando, né, que, que o, esse jogador aí é filipino, né, que joga atualmente na liga australiana, é um jogador alto, né, é um jogador que chamou atenção, né, nesse... nesse que chegou a treinar não só no Knicks, né, como no Atlanta Hawks e em, em vários outros times da NBA, né, fazer treinos, uh, e que se, for, se aparecer, né, no draft, deve aparecer para os times na segunda rodada. E que, inclusive, né, Kai Soto é, chegou a agradar, né, nesses treinamentos aí, chamou atenção, de repente pode ser que venha, né, uma, um segundo round de de draft, mas vamos ver o que é. Uh, next question, Zach. Zach, uh, first in Portuguese. Zach, uh, nós falamos primeiro sobre draft, né? Agora eu gostaria de falar com você sobre o que todo Nick fan quer saber. Rumores, né? Rumores que você pode aqui, ó, aguçar nós, Nick fans, sobre o New York Knicks, né? É, então eu gostaria de se falasse para nós, né, sobre alguns jogadores e de repente at coisas atuais, né, sobre os rumores. In English for you, Zach. Uh, I want to hear from you about all Nick fans wants to know rumors, né? Nick's rumors. Uh, what you can do? Uh, do you can uh, tell me and another? Nick fans in Brazil about the rumors from the Knicks, né? Uh, for example, Donovan Mitchell, Jalen Brunson, né? Uh, D'Angelo Russell, or the another uh, rumors. For example, Mitchell Robinson, uh, in your opinion, uh, uh, stay or leaves the Knicks, for example. Um, 
or another rumors uh, you can tell uh, from uh, our Brazilians, né? Yeah, I mean, look, the, the big thing with the Knicks this offseason is finding a guard. There's no doubt yes. about it. Um, they need a lead guard. Whether, it's, whether they trade up in this draft or not, they need to find a guy. There's been all kinds of talk of Jalen Brunson, the Dallas Mavericks point guard, who's an unrestricted free agent. Now, the big question is, will the Mavericks do everything they can to keep him? You know, they, the Knicks do not have any salary cap space, so they can only – they could – they – the Mavericks can offer him a fifth year where the Knicks can't. The Knicks can only go four. Now, if the Mavericks are willing to pay up and he wants to stay, there's really nothing the Knicks could do with Brunson. Yes. Now, there is still optimism. You know, the Knicks recently hired his dad, who, who was a one-time Knicks, so, to be on their coaching staff. So maybe that that helps matters. And with the Knicks, he'd be the guy. He'd be the point guard. In Dallas, he, he's kind of, you know, he's a, he's a role player. He's kind of the second guy. Um, so that's obviously, you know, something to keep your eye on. Um, now there's talk of a possibly, uh, a trade for Malcolm Brogdon of the Pacers. He's a very productive player when he's on the court, but he's a guy who's been hurt a lot. Now, do the Knicks really want to make that move and trade for a guy who's been hurt? And, and there's, and there are question marks about him. Ah, you D'Angelo know? Russo so those are, or another. Right. Now, then there's Donovan Mitchell. There, there are major questions. You know, he obviously is a big star. He's from here. His dad actually works for the New York Mets. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a major question mark. I think Brogdon is probably the most likely, you know, move. But time will tell. Um, I think Mitchell Robinson will be gone in the end. I don't. I don't see him coming back. Uh, I, I I agree. I agree with you about this. Uh, and another rumors in New York about the Knicks. It's the uh, new rumor, uh, new uh, another player uh, now about the Knicks or not in this moment. No, right now those are the those are the big ones. You know they don't have a lot of salary cap space. So I think those are, you know, those are kind of the big names out there, you know, of, of what, of what may happen. You know, that, that's kind of, that's kind of what you're looking at right now. Um, you know, in terms of, of possible moves, um, you know, you're always seeing new things come about, but right now I think those are the big, uh, those are the big question marks. Ah, great. A pergunta, sim, a pergunta, né, que eu começo a fazer agora é sobre rumores, né? do New York Knicks saber, né, o que, que o, o Zach pensa a, a respeito, né, e ele comenta que, que uma das primeiras questões que o Knicks precisa se mexer nesses rumores, independente de como eu citei, Donovan Mitchell, Jalen Brunson, uh, D'Angelo Russell, ou qualquer outro, né, nome, ele já começa falando, por exemplo, sobre Jalen Brunson, né, do, do, do Dallas Mavericks, e depende, né? Depende do que, que o Dallas vai querer propor para o jogador, porque ele se valorizou né? nos playoffs. Uh, pode ser que, ele, que, que a oferta seja grande e eles consigam cobrir. Tem que ver qual que é a vontade né, de Jalen Brunson, porque não basta só o Knicks querer e ele não querer. Basta saber se o Dallas está disposto a pagar uh, X, né? E o X2 e o Knicks X1, né? por exemplo. Estou chutando aqui. É eu poderia tentar competir com o Dallas, né? Em seguida, até a gente ele fala sobre o Malcolm Brogdon, o Malcolm Brogdon do Indiana Pacers, né? Só que ele é um jogador interessante, um jogador bom, mas que se machuca muito, né? E que isso é complicado, né? Em seguida, né, ele começa abordando né, sobre Donovan Mitchell, né? O Spider, que realmente é um jogador de elite, né? Digamos assim, que anda visitando bastante Nova York, né, jogos dos Mets, e até, por exemplo, entre Malcolm Brogdon e Donovan Mitchell, ele acha mais fácil o movimento ser feito com Malcolm Brogdon, né, do que Donovan Mitchell. Uh, sobre Mitchell Robinson, ele acha que a maior probabilidade é que o Mitchell Robinson saia nessa off-season. Uh, the, last, the last question, Zach. Oh, in Portuguese first. 
Se o Knicks não conseguir né, um point guard, um, um PD, é, você acredita que o Knicks uh, vai dar a oportunidade, por exemplo, para o Emmanuel Kikley uh, ser o nosso starter nessa próxima temporada? Você acredita nisso? Ou, de repente, Derek Rose uh, pode continuar no Knicks né, e ser esse point guard e Kikley sair do banco? In English for you. Uh, in your opinion, Zach. Uh, the Knicks don't get it a PG. And off-season, in, in draft, don't get it a PG. <laughs> Your opinion, uh, Emmanuel Kikley uh, can be a starter uh, playing uh, PG in Knicks point guard, in your opinion? Uh, Tom Timbado gives, your, uh, uh, gives opportunity uh, from this guy or Derek Rose not injury <laughs> begin starter and Emmanuel Kikley uh from the bench in, in, in the in the next season in your opinion because I don't I we don't uh, uh we don't know about the future man but uh if the Knicks don't get it a PG in your opinion I think quickly is better suited off the bench. I think he's I think he's better suited for them as kind of a you know a microwave scorer, guy who comes off the bench and can play multiple roles. I, I don't think he's a starting point guard on a decent on a decent to good team in the NBA. I just don't I just don't see the skill set. I just think it takes away from what he does well. You know, he's a really good shooter, he's a guy who can score the ball, and I think that's really where you wanna, you know, you know use him i just don't think he's i just don't think that's what he's done that I, you know it's just just my opinion i don't think he's a starting caliber player uh for a good team i'm not saying he can't i just think his best niche is a guy who comes off the bench and, and scores and shoots instead of you know someone who tries to be a playmaker no. uh i i ask you i ask to you now because uh i i see now uh nick fans loves now emmanuel kickley now Yeah. Uh, different with uh, Julius Randle, actually. Uh, Julius Randle in the another season. Whoa, the MVP, MIP in the, <laughs> the yeah. last season. Out, out. Né? Uh, and so, RJ Barrett, LB Topping, and Emmanuel Kikley. I, I see né, the loves. Né? Uh, In, in Nick fans about the, uh, about these guys, né? right. so I ask to you, uh, in Emmanuel Kikley, né? just uh, I see né? uh, the Nick fans loves, né? uh, likes né? Uh, Emmanuel Kikley playing in, in PG, né? but uh, I agree with you, uh, and the Knicks needs to uh, get né? uh, Uh, a great, great uh, PG for the next season and Nick, Nick saw a long time ago needs uh, a great PG long time man I uh, I, I talk with you in backstage I am Nick fan since 92 man I saw I saw John Starks uh, and uh, another uh, PG is in this team man uh, it's complicated it's complicated patience uh, from the Nick fans yeah uh, here <laughs> here here in the century in the century it's a complicated zach nah? yeah. so i pray i really pray zach in this draft <laughs> nix get it <laughs> a great player hey god not, god help you're not Knicks. alone you got a lot of nick fans that are praying right there with you <laughs> I, i i i am i i really really pray in this draft man <laughs> Em seguida eu perguntei se, no caso, o Knicks não consegue nem no off-season, nem no draft, né, fazer um movimento para trazer um armador de elite. Uh, caso isso não aconteça, se o Kikley poderia ter essa oportunidade de ser o starter na posição de point guard ou não? Uh, pelos comentários né, do Zach, uh, ele acredita que não, né? que por mais que o Kikley tenha algumas características interessantes, mas ele é muito mais realmente um, um shooting guard do que port, propriamente um point guard, por mais que ele tenha ido bem, né? Então, ele acredita que por mais que tenha essas habilidades, na opinião dele, não. Uh, Zach, uh, 
thank you so much, man. Thanks so yeah, man. much. My pleasure. Man, for coming né, in this channel. I hope my bad English don't... No, you're great. <laughs> no, your English is really good, man. <laughs> I will be better, man. I will be better in the future. But I, I so happy, né? Bring you in this channel. I hope, né? Bring bring you again in this channel. Okay. Uh, yeah, man. Anytime. Ah, uh, uh, great. And uh, I thank so much, né? For for uh, or your answers, né? For Brazilians, uh, because in this in this country, it's very important. Uh, close, uh, uh, very close with you and. Uh, Another channel, page, uh, journalist, né? and uh, ex players uh, talking with us about the Knicks. It's very, very, very important, man. Thank you so much again, Zach. And uh, I hope soon. I hope soon. Né? And uh, I, 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 I wish uh, for you uh, so, so, so great, great, uh, great things. Well, thank you very much, man. Same to you. And uh, good luck on Thursday, all right? Okay, man. Take care, man. I see you. <risos> bye, bye. Bye. E aí, pessoal? Este foi mais um vídeo aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Espero que vocês tenham gostado, né? E como é de praxe, pessoal, você, você mesmo que está assistindo pela primeira vez o canal Nick Fans Brasil, não se esqueça de se inscrever. Se inscreva aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Não esqueça, né, você que já é inscrito, de ativar o sininho para notificação de novos vídeos. E também sempre deixar o seu like, um comentário, compartilhar com os amigos, por que não? Para ajudar com que o canal Nick Fans Brasil chegue cada vez em mais e mais pessoas, pessoal. Beleza? Conto com a ajuda de vocês, Nick Fans. Um abraço! <música>